In my recent book, Hidden Space Energy, I present my major discovery about a new source of energy in space, partly known as the Zero Point Energy. It follows the conclusions of my treatise Basic Structures of Matter, Supergravitation Defied Theory, that was first published in 2001. Then, in 2005, I published this book as a paperback book with a size of 612 pages. I published it by Amazon.com. Following the conclusions from this treatise, I published also another book, Beyond the Visible Universe, also in 2005. Then, in 2008, I published this book that uh, describes another discovery from my theory, Field Propulsion by Control of Gravity, Theory and Experiments. And in 2012, I published this book, Structural Physics of Nuclear Fusion, that describes the possibility for obtaining uh, e energy from cold fusion. And now let me provide a summary of the book Hidden Space Energy. It contains seven chapters and one appendix. In chapter one, I discuss the controversial issue of the physical vacuum energy from a new point of view. The understanding of the zero-point energy comes from a new idea about the ether space developed in the supergravitation unified theory. Space known as physical vacuum contains an underlying superfine structure of intrinsic matter called the cosmic lattice. This is a new approach permitting the revealing of the hidden energy in space, so the attempt for accessing this energy does not contradict the law of energy conservation. The appendix shows some mathematical treatment about some important features of the cosmic lattice. Chapter 2 shows the difference between the BSM supergravitation unified theory atomic models and the quantum mechanical models of the atoms and elementary particles. This is important for understanding what kind of physical process is necessary to access the zero-point energy. The supergravitation unified theory reveals that stable elementary particles contain an intrinsic three dimensional material substructure. Their spatial arrangement in the atomic nuclei define the row and column pattern of the periodic table of elements while obtaining physical dimensions. Quantum mechanical models work only with energy levels. They cannot work with physical dimensions. Their only mathematical constructs enable to show some important features of the atoms and the chemical bonds. In Chapter 3, I present the physics of the hidden energy source as predicted by the supergravitation defined theory. The new space concept defined by the cosmic lattice provides a physical understanding of two types of hidden space energy, a static type and a dynamic type. The first one is a primary source of nuclear energy. It is discussed in my book, Structural Physics of Nuclear Fusion. The second one, the dynamical energy, is of vibrational type. It is much smaller, but is also unlimited because it is supplied 
by the static energy source. In chapter 4, I discussed the essence of the heterodyne resonance mechanism that permits access to the dynamic type of the hidden space energy. The heterodyne resonance mechanism is theoretically predicted in the supergravitation unified theory. It permits access to dynamic type of space energy by a process involving the anomalous magnetic moment and the quantum mechanical spin flipping of the electron. Unique spectra of the heterodyne resonance mechanism are obtained for the first time. They are the characteristic signature of this effect. Chapter 5 energy of lightning. The study of the lightning phenomena reveals the existence of a heterodyne resonance mechanism. Consequently, a fraction of the dynamical type of space energy is accessed during the lightning. The effect is very strong, especially during the lightning between clouds and ground, where the current reaches tens and even hundreds of kiloamperes. Chapter 6 provides historical overview of devices and experiments for accessing zero-point energy. A few experimental devices reported during the past centuries with a feature of overunity are overviewed. They indicate an involvement of the heterodyne resonance mechanism. Amongst the promising experiments are those of Nikola Tesla, the device of Thomas Morey, the testatic device of Paul Bauman, the noble gas engine of Joseph Papp, and some others. In Chapter 7, I provide physical and technical considerations for accessing the, the zero-point energy by the heterodyne resonance mechanism. This chapter provides the output results from extensive research and experimentation from me and some other experimenters. Based on the physical understanding and analysis, useful recommendations are provided for building and properly adjusting of an apparatus called a plasma ignition device. Important critical parameters are revealed that were not known in the prior art. Detailed electrical circuits and mechanical recommendations are provided for the building of successful devices. Consecutive phases in the experimental study and the methods for estimation of the input and output energy are shown. They could lead to obtaining of electrical power over unity. Everything written in this book is extensively verified. The book is recommended to researchers and experimenters with technical skills. The book is on sale by Amazon.com. Before publishing the book in 2019, I was keynote speaker in the third international conference on nanotechnology and material science in Rome, Italy. In this conference, I presented report about the energy of the lightning. At the end of my presentation, I demonstrated a mini lightning device that permits study of some parameters of the lightning in laboratory environment. This is the mini lightning device that I demonstrated in the International Conference on Nanotechnology and Material Science in 2019 in Rome, Italy. 
Now I would like to, to show how this device is working. In fact, this is only the electrical part of the plasma ignition device. So this is the high voltage driver that gives about 7 kilovolts output. This is a small Tesla coil supplied by, by this driver. This is a high voltage rectifier and the high voltage pulses uh, conveyed to this plasma switch between this and this electrodes. The plasma switch has other two electrodes, this and this, that is supplied by a low voltage but higher current. This low voltage comes from this, this capacitor battery that is about 800 microfarads and uh, the voltage is up to 450 volts. But in fact, I operate no more than 350 volts. This is the charger device of this capacitor bank. The whole system is supplied by lead-acid batteries with the purpose for complete, complete separation from the power grid. Now I'll demonstrate the work. This is only high voltage spark. But in order to demonstrate the effect of avalanche, I have to charge initially the capacitor bank. This voltmeter show multiplied by 10. And now starting this, it appears a loud uh, explosion. This in fact contains an avalanche effect. A similar effect occur in the natural lightning phenomena. I'll repeat again, charging the capacitor bank up to 340 volts. And now the sound of explosion is much stronger than this heard by the record. The complete circuit diagrams are given in the book Hidden Space Energy.